Is it the church's doctrine that someone who's divorced and remarried civilly cannot receive communion? Um, I'm not aware of any official pronouncement that says it that way. What I'm aware of is that church doctrine says that you cannot receive communion in a state of mortal sin without first having gone to, commun to confession, having confessed that mortal sin, and having received absolution from it. And so the question then is, uh, is a person who is living in uh, a relationship, a second relationship, uh, non-sacramental, in a state of mortal sin? The traditional answer to that is objectively, yes, because of, the, of Jesus' teaching. Somebody who um, leaves his uh, lawful wife or husband to take on another is in a state of adultery. So objectively, yes, that person is in a state of mortal sin. And until they show repentance and move out of it, then they cannot get absolution, cannot receive communion. But there are some authors who say there's a difference between the objective state of mortal sin and the subjective state of mortal sin. Because then there's the whole question of informed conscience that enters into play. Now, here there is a whole other series of questions. What is true? What is meant by informed conscience? What is meant by a, an erroneous con uh, conscience, one that, it, that is making a mistake? Uh, th there are many issues to be discussed at this point. But suffice it to say that one of the cardinals uh, who spoke last year, who was known for the solidity of his doctrine, um, said that, we cannot take it for granted that a couple who is divorced and remarried civilly is necessarily in a state of mortal sin. Now, he would say that that person still cannot approach communion, not because of the possible state of mortal sin that they would be in, but because of the incompatibility between the rupture of marriage, which is a sacrament of covenant, and the reception of communion, which is also a sacrament of covenant. So he comes to it another way. So when you say, is it doctrinal or is it disciplinary, that question itself needs to be discussed. This is the whole issue around conscience. And what is the place of personal conscience, of informed conscience, of a healthy conscience uh, in making these kinds of decisions? I would add something else. I would add that St. Paul says a very powerful thing in um, the first letter to the Corinthians. When he's discussing an issue about whether people can eat meat that has been sacrificed to Greek gods or not. And so some are saying, well, of course we can because we know those Greek gods don't exist. So eating that meat means nothing. But within the community, that there were some that were scandalized before this. So Paul says this, he says, everything is permitted, but not everything is constructive. And so even if a couple or an individual were to come in his conscience to say, I can receive communion, then the question is, should I? Would it be constructive for my community for me to present myself for communion? What message would I be sending? Would this be building up my community or tearing it down? For the, good of community, for, my, for the good of my community, I might choose not to receive communion, even if I believe in my deepest conscience that I have a, a right to. Th that is another dimension that we haven't spoken about and that is not often spoken about. But it raises the issue of the responsibility of the individual towards the communion. The meaning of communion is not only that I'm being united to my God in Jesus Christ, but that I am deeply united to my brothers and sisters who are sharing the body of Christ with me. And if by my act of communion, I am breaking that unity, then I have other questions to ask myself. <laughs>